Check out this beauty, although it's seen better days. This video is part of the Unique Antique Challenge hosted by Crafty Creech DIYs and Furniture Flips and co-hosted by New Renaissance. The challenge prompt, Bare Wood. I inspect this piece and find some gouges, although it's not in totally terrible shape. The top lifts off and you can see that it left some marks from removing it. I have it laying on its back now and you can see that um, there were some pocket holes in the bottom and also these shelf brackets were put in with nails and not with screws. Um, so they're pretty deeply in there. So originally I was going to remove them. I might just work around them. Look how deep that drawer is. It's such a big, deep drawer. And then of course there's two uh, cupboards. So lots of great storage in this little piece. Beautiful, uh, beautiful piece. I can't wait to restore it. So the rules state that you don't have to have it all be bare wood, but just show some bare wood. So I'm using a scraper here along the side and revealing this gorgeous grain underneath. If you've watched my channel for long, you'll know that I wasn't always a fan of using the scraper. I wasn't using the right one and I just didn't exactly know how to use it right. But when I saw this piece, I thought it was definitely going to be easier to scrape. Somehow I knew that it was going to be easier to scrape than to strip it and I wasn't wrong. So I have two scrapers, one's a little bit smaller, and then there's the larger one. So between the two of them, I was able to get this area uh, on either side of the um, opening bare. So I'm pretty happy about that. It was relatively easy. So I begin the process of filling in all those little holes with Dixie mud and just making the surface smooth because I'll be painting this part. There's a little piece of veneer sticking up so I'm just using a syringe with wood glue in it and just forcing that glue in there and then I'm gonna clamp it down and that's an easy repair on this and then when it's dry i hit that with a little bit of the dixie mud as well to smooth it over on the frame of the window there was some glue because it split and someone tried to repair it with glue previously so i scrape off the excess glue and then i use the mud in this area as well I used the scraper along the side of the top where someone had accumulated some paint accidentally. I'm sure it was in someone's home and they were painting the wall and they accidentally got it on the piece. So I'm also working on the inside of it while I'm waiting for the mud to dry. I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning and I'm cleaning the inside thoroughly. And it was pretty dirty. And also you want to make sure that you rinse this as well. So your paint adheres a lot better that way. And I still continue on the outside of the piece now to do some sanding. Uh, I'm using um, a 120 grit and 
basically just going over the entire piece, everything that I mudded and also uh, the area where I removed the paint. You can see that there's that alligator texture on here and the sandpaper is doing a good job on that as well because don't forget we're going to be painting that area. Takes a while to get in all the little grooves. normally don't go too crazy sanding a piece that I'm going to be painting but this one kind of required that and on the sides I'm doing a scuff sanding and here's an area that I really missed uh, with the mud so I'm going to have to come back in So again, while we're waiting for uh, mud to dry, I start cutting in with the boss. Since I'm not removing those shelves, I'm using a detail brush, a nice, it's an artist brush, it's a nice size, a flat edge. And I am using the boss because it's a stain blocking primer. So in case there's any bleed through, um, I wanna do a transfer in here so I'm doing a light background and so I cut in and use that I want to let it dry and make sure that it doesn't bleed through now I'm using Dixie Bell's American honey stain this is an oil-based stain and I'm just using a detail brush to get in that area and I am loving this stain Usually I go for a water-based stain. I've been loving the Au Naturel and the Voodoo Gel stain line, but I just knew that this American Honey color was gonna be gorgeous on that wood. And again, I wasn't wrong. I wipe back the stain and I think that it's really beautiful. I'm anxious to get the rest of the, the wood now that I'm leaving exposed. What do you think? Now I use another small flat artist brush and cut in the detail around that area that I just stained. I am using Anchor uh, in silk in the Dixie Belle line. So I give it a coat and now I'm gonna go back to the inside and I'm using again silk in Sunkissed. And I'm just cutting, cutting in again with these small artist brushes. And then I use a larger brush to fill in the area. I lay out my transfer. It's called the English Twall Transfer from Iron Orchid Designs. Any way you lay these sheets, they match up from side to side and from top to bottom. So that's a win-win. 
I prepare the sheets by cutting off the border around the outside edges. I waited a long time before I did this because you definitely want to make sure your paint is dry. That is uh, one of the most problematic things whenever you're doing a transfer. If it doesn't transfer right, it's probably because the paint wasn't completely dry. So I'm just burnishing this on and i'm wrapping it around that bottom portion and i will save those little scraps at the end it's going to take three sheets across each one and then a portion of another sheet so i might be able to use those to piece it together um, we'll see if i don't have to open another package i'd prefer not to because i did use some of this previously these transfers go a long, long way. There's eight sheets in there. It takes a minute, but everything transfers off beautifully. There was a little kind of quarter moon shaped section on the bottom of the window. So I thought maybe this would be an opportunity to show some bare wood. I scraped it and then I was kind of disappointed when it was all said and done. I went through the process and then I even stained it a little bit. And again, it was just kind of meh to me. So um, I ended up painting over it. Then I thought, well, maybe this might be an opportunity to uh, add, maybe paint it in the sun kissed and then put a little bit of that transfer on there. Then I thought, ah, that might be a little too busy. So perhaps when it's all said and done, um, considering I end up painting over it in the black, it may just remain as is after all this work, or I might put a mold on there. Um, because I plan on putting a little white wax on the detail parts that are at the top and the bottom. So we'll see how that goes. So I start on the drawer. Again, this is the perfect opportunity with that same wood that's on the sides of the opening of the top of the china closet portion. And I'm just doing some scraping here. And you just have to remember in this piece, there is that... Um, big scratch or gouge that we have to deal with. So right now I'm just scraping and then we'll pay attention to that afterwards. So I put some mud in that gouge in the front. That was probably a mistake, uh, especially using the brown mud. I perhaps could have used white because then I needed to color correct where I used it. So that process began uh, and it wasn't going well after a little bit of sanding and you know, I just was trying to lighten up that color and then restain it and nothing seemed to be working. So you'll watch my trial and errors and then you'll see what my solution ended up being.
Meanwhile, I sand the shelves. I was on the fence about whether to do them in black or whether to do them natural, and I decided to sand them and see what happened. And I ended up really liking them after I stained them. And I'm also sanding the fronts of the cabinet doors that I took off. So I am being very, very careful here because I don't want to blow through that veneer. success. I think those doors turned out beautiful. I turned the uh, piece on its side to do some of the painting. Um, kind of did the bulk of the painting while it's on its side. It was just much easier to get to all those little nooks and crannies underneath. So um, that's a little trick if you're able to do that, especially light when all the drawers and doors are out of it. So here's my solution for the drawer front. I used an iron orchid design mold and made a fake escutcheon plate uh, for a new handle. And I painted everything in uh, Krylon metallic gold and then I waxed it with Dixie Belle's black, uh, black wax and then just wiped off to get it to stay in all the detailed areas. The hardware wasn't new, it was just part of my stash. I paint the inside of the doors with the same sun-kissed color because I plan on putting the toile on the inside of the two doors as well. I glue the new plate onto the drawer and it doesn't quite cover all of the sins but the biggest area that I wanted to conceal it definitely did. I'll continue to work on that little spot but I feel a lot less intimidated about it now. Now I'm using some Big Mama's Butter in the Orange Grove scent, and it smells amazing. I can't open it without smelling it, uh, and condition the inside of those cabinets 
areas and also the drawers so they will slide smoothly and everything just smells good on the inside. I always like to choose that if I'm going to um, be using it around food. I just feel like the orange is the nicest scent. And now to gild the lily. I think that's where the term gilding comes from in the gilding wax. And the term gilding the lily means to embellish something that's already perfect. So not to say my work is perfect, far from it, but I think it's pretty nice. And I think this just adds that extra touch it needs. Plus my maiden name was Lily. So I don't know. <laughs> I love gilding wax and this bronze is just what it needs just in those two spots, I think, to make this piece pop. And I hope that you like the results. You'll have to let me know what you think and please visit all of the um, wonderful artists that participated in this challenge. Thank you again uh, to Crafty Creech. DIY and to new renaissance co-host. Please like and subscribe to their channels. I'm so blessed to be part of a community that we do these collaborations. It's so much fun um, and just enjoy bringing this content to you. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, you'll want to do that so you don't miss anything. Visit us at LaVintageDecor.company and on Instagram we're LaVintageDecor and on Facebook we're LaVintageDecor Altoona. Stay well!